Hi there, thank you for watching this Discipleship Matters video. The Discipleship Matters series is a series we've put together of relevant topics to you and me to help us grow closer to Jesus in the day and age in which we live. We hope that this video is a blessing to you, and if it is, please feel free to share it with anybody you think it will be helpful to. Enjoy. Good morning, church. Welcome to part three of our sexual purity course. In part one, we spoke about why sexual purity is important um, and the impact that uh, struggling in this area can have on the life of the believer. Uh, in part two, I identified what I believe is the number one issue in our church today, uh, and that's pornography. Uh, it's not just a, a worldwide secular uh, non-church issue, but it's something that has infiltrated the life of the church. And unfortunately, the church hasn't done a very good job of acknowledging it or countering it in, in any significant way. Um, and today, I want to end off on a positive note. It was a pretty heavy session in the last one, going through all of those stats and realizing uh, the, the nature of the problem and uh, the, the heaviness of the problem that we're dealing with. Uh, but today, I really want to encourage your heart and speak hope uh, to you. This session is called Winning the Fight Together. I really believe that we are going to win this war. I believe that we're going to win it when we go together. I think there's a few important uh, elements. I want to touch on them. There's, there's five things I'm going to talk about today and how we do that. And the first one is called, I'm going to call it, uh, Eliminating the Taboo of this topic. At the moment, sexual sin is not something we talk about very easily in the church. It's a secret thing. It's shameful. Uh, we wear a nice mask, and uh, everyone thinks everything's going fine in our lives. But this thing thrives in the shadows where it can isolate and destroy. We need to start talking about um, this more. From the pulpit to the parking lot, from small groups in the corridors of our homes, we need to start talking about our struggles with these issues and being real and honest with each other so that we can start helping each other find freedom in it. This is why we're running this course at SBC. We don't want to um, hide from these issues. We don't want to ignore them. At this church, we want to talk about real-life problems and real-life issues that people are facing in our church. Don't be fooled. The silence on this issue is not a sign that we're okay. It's a sign that there's a problem. And we need to get over the taboo of this subject, and we need to create a space where people feel safe and free to talk. And once we start doing that, we are on our way. The second thing we need to start doing is realize that we have to mobilize laborers. If more than half of the church are struggling with pornography, then a surefire, way, a surefire way to fail is to hope that the pastoral care team can get to everyone and, and help them solve their problems on their own. There's far too many people for us to be able to do that. If we're going to win this war together, then we need laborers. We need to mobilize people uh, who are passionate about this topic and passionate about this area to rise up from within the church and come join us in the fight. I know that there are many of you who have found victory in this area. It might have been a place you struggled with for a short period of time, maybe a longer period of time, but you've, through the grace uh, of the Lord and uh, the power of the Holy Spirit at work in your life, you've managed to reach a place of freedom. And you are in a unique position to disciple someone who is behind you. And I want to encourage you to rise up. Pray about this uh, ministry. Is this a ministry in the church that God is stirring your heart for? Is he wanting you to join the fight uh, for sexual purity in our church? I'm going to give you an opportunity at the end of the session to come and join that fight. And we need more and more laborers to put their hands to the wheel. We're going to start talking about this more in our church. More and more people are going to rise up to, to uh, uh, take this ministry on. But the third thing that's going to help us is a realization that we are looking for a holistic solution. 
I think too often when someone's struggling with pornography and they just want it done in their life, their hope is that they're going to get the perfect bit of advice that's going to give them the top 10 tips and then they'll be able to stop. And this is not a, a solution that, that ever really works. Our, our problem when we struggle with pornography goes far deeper than just our behavior. There's a reason why we are driven towards that behavior. There's deep-seated issues uh, in our heart that need to be dealt with. It is possible to modify your behavior. This is why you can find seasons of victory. If you've struggled with pornography over a long period of time, like I did, probably along the way you've had months, maybe even years, where you were able to walk in freedom. Yet somehow you find yourself falling back into it eventually. And the reason that happens is you have modified your behavior to come into line with something, but you've never uh, realized you need to work on your heart in a very deep way. And there's things in your heart driving you towards that behavior. Until you start dealing with the deeper issues, you're always going to land back uh, in the same behavior problems. So we are looking for holistic solution. We're not just going to change our behavior. We're going to change our thinking. And that takes longer. Behavior takes six to nine months to change. The thinking can take two to five years. And in that process, we're finding healing in the deepest place within us, our hearts. Pornography is not the problem. The problem is what's going on inside of your heart. Pornography is a solution, a, a wrong solution, but it's a solution you are choosing to uh, act out with because you are trying to manage pain deep within your heart. Our hearts have been wounded, many of us from a young age, and our unwanted sexual behavior is a way of managing pain that has been seared into our souls. Some of us have lived with this pain from childhood for so long, it's all we know. And that's why the way we manage that pain has become a part of who we are and a part of our lives. But when we start to get help on the real issues and really start to talk about deeper issues that have led to the way that we are behaving, it is hard work. It does take time. But then you can start to find healing and wholeness on those deeper issues, it becomes easier to bring your behavior into line. I want to talk about what next steps we are going to take at our church to help people find freedom in this area. And I'm going to close with just a story of my own journey to freedom. So as I've said in previous sessions, I struggled with this issue for 17 years, far longer than I needed to. The reason why it took me so long, probably my biggest mistake in that whole journey of trying to get free from this and struggling for so long to be able to, my biggest mistake was that I tried to beat this thing alone. Yes, I told my pastor. Yes, I told some friends. Yes, I told some family members. There were moments where I brought someone into this journey and they prayed with me. But after prayer... I would feel better because I'd confessed and I would go straight back to fighting the battle alone. And when you do that, defeat is waiting around the corner. You don't win this fight alone. You win it together. How did things change for me after 17 years of repeating the same patterns and falling back into the same mistakes? Well, my breakthrough came when I realized that I can't do this by myself. And I want to say to anyone listening who is struggling and hoping that this course will be the thing to set you free, if you watch these videos and go straight back to trying to fight this problem on your own, you will not get free. You will continue to fall. You might have little uh, moments of victory, seasons of victory, but if you are doing this on your own, you are going to fall. The biggest secret I can give you to success in this area is to walk together. And that's what happened with me. I found a place where I could go into counseling with two people who knew exactly what I was going through and what I was dealing with. And we spent six months together praying, talking, and working on all of the issues I'd never even realized were there. 
it takes much longer to really work on trying to get free from this. This was different to praying once off with my past and then moving on my own. This was weekly conversations for six months, um, intensely working on the deeper issues uh, in my heart. It included a detox. There was no access to internet. There was no access to uh, devices and areas that I was struggling in uh, previously. And that was the best decision I could ever have made. Coming out of that time, um, it helped me reach a place of uh, walking in freedom, and that was eight years ago. I really want to encourage you, if you're trying to do this on your own, you're making a mistake. And if you're going, Mark, where do I go for the help? Where do I go for people that are going to walk with me like they walked with you over that six-month period? I want to say that's the direction we're heading in. That's the next step in our church. Once you start to learn about the pain and the shame that you're carrying, uh, you, it starts to change that the behavior that acts out sexually. Working on these deeper issues is much harder than a prayer of confession because it's not a quick fix. And until you're ready to do whatever it takes to get free, you won't get free. But if you really are ready to do whatever it takes, then I have good news for you, my friend. There is freedom from pornography addiction in Jesus Christ. The Christian is able to, by the power of the Holy Spirit, live with sexual purity and integrity before the Lord. God wants you to have that. And God is the most powerful agent in the universe. Nothing is stronger than Him. The Holy Spirit, the hound of heaven, will not give up. He will not let go of your heart, Christian. He's able to heal your pain, take your guilt and your shame, and help you develop self-control that will stop you from going back. This is what we're going to do in our church. We are going to start a recovery program. If you're interested in being part of this journey, please email, email me at markw at sbc.co.za. Markw at sbc.co.za. Maybe you are struggling in this area and you've realized watching these videos that you need to bring people in on the journey and you're tired of doing this alone. Please email me. I want to help you. Um, but maybe you're a laborer who has found victory in this area and you realize listening to these videos that that victory is not just meant to be for you, but it's something God wants to use in your life to help disciple other people who are behind you in this area. We want to raise up laborers. We want to start groups on a Monday night at our church. Uh, there is wonderful material out there, uh, experts that have dedicated themselves to uh, helping people find freedom from sexual addiction, particularly Christians, ministries, and we are going to go through this material together in our groups, pray for one another, uh, have real conversations, and get real accountability going. Once that's happening in our church, we are going to start winning this war. And I want to encourage you to uh, take the courageous step, uh, send through that email to me, and let's start that journey together. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you that you see the deepest, darkest shadows of our hearts. Nothing is hidden from you, and yet you love us, Lord. We feel so guilty and so shameful over our behavior. Uh, we isolate ourselves, we run and we hide. Yet your message to us is, I love you. I accept you. You can come to me. I want to deal with the brokenness that's in you. And Lord, I want to pray somehow in your wisdom, you've created space for um, us in fellowship to be able to help each other through these big issues. And I really want to pray, Lord, in our church that people that are feeling lost and alone in this area and don't know which way to go and which way is up or down, I pray that this uh, ministry that we're starting on a Monday night here at this church, that you would bless it, that it would become a safe place for people to come and talk honestly about problems and issues, and that it would be a space where they can really find freedom as they walk a road together. Lord, would you raise up laborers, even now who are listening, who just know this is the ministry you've been calling me to. This is the opportunity to get involved. We commit it into your hands, Lord, and we pray that uh, many people would find freedom.
from these issues and be able to run freely in their love for you and their service to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We've got one more part to the series. It's the end of the teaching sessions, but maybe there's a question that's risen up in your heart that I haven't covered. Uh, I haven't uh, tried to cover every single question that might come up in someone's heart who is struggling in this area. But uh, Matt Johnson's going to interview myself and Anita, and he's going to ask some of those questions uh, I hope I haven't answered yet. And I really want to encourage you to, to follow that uh, interview, see if there's anything more you can pick up and learn. Uh, what's especially interesting is Anita's going to be part of that discussion, and she's never struggled with pornography, uh, but uh, she has suffered as a spouse of someone who has, and she's learned a lot uh, along her journey, and she also wants to be a blessing to people who might be in a similar position to her. So please uh, come back for that final session. And uh, we'll see you soon. Cheers.